Do you want to take the anime girls from your imagination and bring them to life in 3D? If so, then you've come to the right place. Today I'll be sharing some process tips on how to create a character from scratch all the way from a 2D reference to a 3D model. And if you're not good at one or the other, don't worry. I have some methods that help me consistently create characters even without a high skill level. Today we'll be creating a female face with a relaxed eye style. And since we're starting from scratch, let's start with the front facing 2D reference. This type of reference is the most useful when it comes to 3D modeling. Usually all it takes is a good front facing 2D reference to bring a character to life. So step one, open up the drawing program of your choice. So here I've got Photoshop with a decently sized grid and I'll create reference lines that are four high and three wide. And from the bottom corner, I go up one and right one to this spot right here. And I draw a little curve there right in the corner of that square. And this is where the edges of the face will meet. So the face is just two lines, boom, boom. The guidelines you made will give you the perfect angles for those lines. Just make sure it's a little concave, like facing outwards, not perfectly straight. Above half of the vertical line, you can draw your ear. And now let's set up some guidelines for the eye. For the top of the eye, if it's fully opened, it would go above like this. But since we're doing a relaxed slash lazy look, it's gonna be a little closed. So it's gonna be straighter and lower like this. So it's actually not fully within the square. It goes out a little, but that's okay. So at this point, let's quickly draw some lashes. And now notice that the iris is an oval shape and the top half is cut off because the eyelid is partially closed. Now the crease of the eyelid, which is gonna be a little bit higher. And for her eyebrows, we'll do a little downward sloping brow to give her that serious look. The mouth line will be around here in the bottom half. And then we can duplicate this, have it mirrored so that we don't have to draw the entire other side of the face. Now that doesn't look perfect, but it's like reasonable enough to where you can just adjust it using like liquify. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna slightly adjust whatever doesn't feel right on both sides until it looks okay. So here's the difference. And if you follow so far, the gap between the eyes should be a little more than one eye width, which is usually a good measurement for aesthetics. Just one more little fine tune here. I'm gonna take the bottom half and uh, slightly elongate it. And now that looks fine to me. Now, as I finish off the head, which I actually should have done before I mirrored it, the tablet I'm currently using is a Huion Canvas Pro 13. Definitely an upgrade because the last tablet I was using is not even a display tablet. I know some people prefer a bigger size drawing tablet, but this feels like the right size for me in terms of both pixel density and also because one, I don't like moving my arm too much and two, it's just the right size that it doesn't clutter up the desk too much. Link in the description if you wanna check this tablet out. Let's quickly color everything in, starting with the eyes. This is not a pure white, it's like a very, very light gray. And then let's also do the shadow of the eyes. Then selecting a brown for the brows and the lashes. And I'm picking the exact colors I want now so that I don't have to pick them again when I do the 3D model. I couldn't really visualize the hairstyle, so I just um, drew it until I got something that I liked. And this step gets a lot easier with a display drawing tablet because you'll be able to see exactly where the hair strands begin and end. The fully straight look was okay, but I decided to give it some curls at the end this time, just so that I could practice that as well when it comes to the 3D model. Filled it in with some brown, which did not end up being the final hair color, but as you can see, it's kind of lopsided. And this is why 2D artists like to um, repeatedly flip the canvas, because when you see it from the mirrored side, then it really like shows where the imperfections are. I definitely mapped a uh, flip canvas to one of these express buttons on the side of the tablet. Now let's work on the eyes. And uh, I was trying to like mimic how in Genshin Impact, they have some very unique designs within um, the pupils and the irises of the eye. So instead of just the same old colors and shapes, you don't just have to use circles, like you can use a different shape. But anyways, after um, choosing the hair color, at this point, it's pretty much ready to go. You can model it even with just this, but I'll also complete it by tossing in the hair shadows. This way, like I, again, I don't have to choose the hair shadow color later. I already have it here. We're not gonna go and render it or anything like that because again, we're just gonna use it as a reference. Any accessories like hair clips, earrings, things like that, we can add it later as well. But I kind of want to do that when I design the entire outfit of the character, which will be in another video. So anyways, after we're all good here, we go ahead and save it and import it into Blender as a reference image. We want to use the guidelines in Blender as well. So head over to this tab and check off the opacity. 
Let's line the jaw up to a four by three square just like earlier. And don't forget to go to this tab and change the color management from filmic to standard so that we can use the same colors. Now for the next step, yes, you can literally trace over the reference. There would be nothing wrong with that. I choose to model it side by side just because, you know, it's not a commission or anything. So it won't hurt to practice the hand-eye coordination a little. So here, let's mimic the jaw lines from the 2D uh, on that 4x3 plane. So here from X perspective, let's push these two points back. And it's going to be about one and a half squares deep. Now I'm going to make some loop cuts and um, span them out making sure that these lines have a nice curve on both the X and the Y axis. Adjusting it as needed, looking at my reference on the side to see exactly where the, that line bent, then extend it to the top of the head. Then I can access the Auto Mirror plugin from the Edit tab on the right. And then from the side, I just found the nose point from my reference. And if you want, you can just follow along these proportions I use for the nose. The tip of the nose is just a little under two squares to the right, and the forehead is usually aligned or a little behind the nose. And just like the face curves, I subdivide it out and curve it like such. Start the basic uh, structure of the mouth here as well. Subdivide it right in the middle. That's where the lips should be. The line for the lips. And two subdivisions for the lips above and below the mouth so that they can stick out like that, and just fill in the space in between with a proper amount of subdivisions. I duplicated a vertex from the side of the face and started working on the shape of the eye here. And again, even though I'm not tracing over, I still have the grid to help me out. I rotate the eyes negative 20 degrees on the Y axis, then scale them back up on the X axis so that it returns to the original width. Here I extrude and scale up the eye socket, move it a little forward, and to fill it in, extrude again and merge at the center. This graphical error is because some of the faces aren't facing the same way, so simply recalculate outside and that will make them all face the same way. I flesh out the nose now in this circular shape so that it's easy to create shadows later if I want to do it using the normal method. And of course the mouth we have to split it so that it actually has an opening. For this character I'm just going to do a standard mouth instead of the one that's specialized for wide transforms. And that can always be added in later. We'll also do the mouth box now. Kind of better to do it when it's not covered by all of the other outside faces. This will probably cause this unwanted behavior if you have subdivision surface where the mouth is open. So just select the inside vertices, shift E and drag it to the right to get it closed. Let's breeze through the rest of this face mesh process. Again, please refer to the previous face mesh tutorial to get a more detailed look into these things if uh, that's what you're looking for. Anyways, once those three, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth are taken care of, the other parts are fairly straightforward. Just make sure that they follow the curves that you've created on the outlines of the forehead and the cheeks. And here, while we go from the top of the face to the bottom of the forehead, we can do a little merging down. As we're going from a more detailed, dense area into an area that doesn't require that many faces. So here I'm merging down into triangles, which will become quads later, if that's what you're worried about. After subdivision surface is applied, that won't be a problem. And this area is usually occluded by hair anyways. Let's finish off the cheek area. Sometimes it helps to create this guideline in the middle first and bring it out just to ensure that the cheeks have that full shape instead of being hollowed out. And here when you're finally closing out the mesh, you could have this on parallel amount of edges where at that point just subdivide it on one of the sides like so. And then if it looks too dense after that, just dissolve one of the edges around it after. Now we're quickly going to complete the back of the skull. And this is accomplished just by extruding the side faces until they meet at the back and then extruding the top faces to meet at that point and then filling in the space in between. Complete the ears here as well so I don't have to do it later. I am by no means an ear guy. Like I just make a basic ear. Just a simple structure like this where it's extruded inwards because this character's ears are not gonna be too exposed anyways. Here at the neck area, we also do a little merging down using the triangles. Create a circle gap there at the bottom of the head so that when we extrude it, that'll be your neck. With eyes, create a new circle object, extrude it, and then merge it at the center to quickly um, complete it. Unwrap it while it's still a circle so it's easier to texture it later. Now we're free to um, shape it into its real shape, which is not really um, a perfect circle, but it's more of an oval. Poke out the middle a little, just so um, when you see it from the side angle, it doesn't look completely flat. And then of course, rotate it uh, to the same orientation that you rotated the eye sockets earlier. So it's, I think, 
uh, negative 20 degrees. These eyes will clip into the sockets because of that partially closed um, default look. But anyways, it will be hidden as we free model these eyelashes to go right on top of that. And you may remember this from one of my previous videos, but I like to loop cut so that, so that the eyelashes have three rows of faces like so. Doing this allows us to extrude from the middle row and that will create our 3D um, eyelashes. First, let's um, push these vertices back so you know it aligns with the head. Someone asked if you could just shrink wrap. Well, you can try, but from my experience, doing it manually gives you more control, which will save more time in the end. Because see like here at the top, there's even like gaps. You have to close those and you have to be pretty precise so that it doesn't clip. We'll do three face rows on the side of the lash as well, like this, because as you can see from the reference, there is an eyelash poking out. And we'll do that just like this by extruding, shrinking the end point, and then loop cutting the middle. That's how you create your 3D lashes. Our character has a total of three, uh, one on the side and two up top. So we'll mimic that as close as we can without having to trace it. And the only other real tip here is to scale those endpoints as much as you can, just so it gives that really sharp look. Don't forget this little line poking out at the inner crease of the eye as well. Now I quickly toss some colors on here. Select all of the vertices of the face and assign them to its own vertex group. That way I can quickly select them later when I want to create the face texture and if I want to do things like edit the normals of the face. And here we'll just use unlit materials and um, eyedropper out the colors that we already have in the reference. For the outline, we just quickly use the inverted hull method. And for the eyelid, we're just gonna use this very thin plane and uh, move it close to the face in the same way we did for the lashes. You can just duplicate the eyelid crease for the eyebrows or vice versa. Save yourself some time. Now I'll create another plane and this is gonna be the shadow that's on top of the eye. By making this gray and um, the inner socket of the eye white, we can just create the illusion of an eyeball without having to create an eyeball itself. And here I'll model the shadows that are uh, near the eyelid crease. Modeling it as opposed to having it in the texture of the face gives you a little more control. Uh, let's say if the eyelid, the eye crease moves and you want to remove the shadow. You can export the UV layout from Blender so that you can know exactly where to texture. Now I just follow the steps from my eye tutorial. Get myself a special Pokeball design and just follow the eye design that was already in the reference. Of course, take into account that it's a sphere and the eye is an oval, so it will like it will like compress horizontally, you know. Again, we on tablet, link in the description. The eye tutorial link is also in the description. If you want to see this part just more detailed. But just quick things to note, the top half is darker because it will coincide with the shadow that we that we modeled. And then there's some highlights at the bottom half and around the iris or the pupil. So we'll texture the colored highlights such as the yellow and the purple and cyan. But that white highlight will actually model it because again, we can control that with shape keys and I'm not gonna show an application in this video itself, but uh, if you subscribe, wink, wink, stay tuned, I'll show you what you can do with that. All right, this part I effed up and didn't record, but basically just apply the mirror modifier before I unwrapped it so that it unwraps as a circle. Because if you don't apply the mirror, then this is how it's gonna unwrap instead. And I don't know if you can see, but the seams are just right around the face and around the ear as well. That way, the easily like the back half of the head and the neck are shaded. So we're off to a good start here. Uh, ignore that hair. It's just a placeholder until we do the process on the real hair for this. But the goal was to go from 2D to an identical 3D here. So I'd say that's okay for now. See you in the next one. Like and subscribe to support the channel. Check out the Patreon for some goodies for $2. Have yourselves a good one. I'm out.